today we're to uh, show how a mains energizer should be installed. Um, I've pre-drilled two holes in the purlin uh, to securely mount the uh, energizer. And I'm just going to tighten those up so they're nice and secure from vibration and mechanical damage. So to install an energizer you'll need a drill, uh, a drill bit, 3 16 bolts of nuts or tech screws uh, and when installing a mains energizer if it's to be installed with the, in accordance with the Australian standards it must be installed out of the weather it needs a 240 volt power source um, and an inside a shed is an ideal application for installing a mains energizer you can't have them outside they're 240 volts and uh, they have to be respected in terms of uh, uh, safety. So what we're doing, we're going to, we've got our unit really securely mounted in, in place. Um, we've connected with underground cable um, out to our fence and to our earth system outside. Um, the underground cable we're using is Thunderbird product, which is double insulated, it's got white and uh, internal insulation and black sheath on the outside. So it's got um, two uh, layers of insulation to help provide the best quality insulation um, you can. So what we're going to do, I've pre-connected our um, earth wire to our earth terminal. This energizer, being a larger unit, has three terminals. It has your earth terminal, which goes to your earth stakes system and non-electrified earth wires in the fence line. High power is the full power terminal which would go to your property. You could run a third wire if you wanted to run a, a, a separate fence around your horse paddock or your house paddock uh, where you've got kid, kiddies and that around and you want a, a safer um, system because um, it's a lot lower voltage. So that could run to that paddock only and the high full power does your property for, from a sa great safety uh, uh, advantage feature. So what we're going to do here now is simply measure where we want to do our connection. Um, cut enough to allow a loop in the wire. Then we need to cut the insulation away just gently. We don't want to damage the internal core, the galvanising on the internal core, so just be a bit patient and work through it bit by bit. Okay, you'll need a screwdriver, um, you'll see the terminals are an M6 bolt, so uh, you can use the bolt itself, or I like to use a screwdriver just to bend and make that form for connection around that terminal or bolt. Place the wire between two washers, as such, and do all the connections up very tight, nice and tight, tight as you can. That's now connected to our fence and our earth system, so we're now ready to apply power to the unit. This particular model um, is a 16 and a half joule unit, quite high powered. Um, shows a digital display of the output voltage. Um, it doesn't tell you what the voltage is at the fence or not, end of the fence line, but it tells you what the voltage is that it's producing into the fence line. So now we've got a securely uh, mounted, uh, safe, uh, installation inside a shed, away from the weather and out of uh, the reach of children and infirm people. Okay, so we've installed our energizer in the shed and the cable's running out under the ground and you can see they're in protected tubing um, and both our live and our earth wires are supplied from the energizer and we're making, we're making our contact point here. The earth thing is coming down, you can see the uh, hoses are bent down so rainwater can't enter and uh, increase the uh, 
uh, risk of um, corrosion uh, and breakdown, so we bend our hoses down, rainwater can't get in there. So with our earth wire, we've uh, made a connection with a galvanised star post, and that's driven 1.5 metres nearly in the ground, so it's only a couple of inches out of the ground, and we've terminated this wire with a, a nut and bolt, so we've got a tight electrical connection, and uh, that's the one piece of wire that's not been cut. Uh, that wire continues along. Um, for an energizer of this size, you need a minimum of three stakes. That's our first stake. The earth wire continues along to our second stake, which is approximately five meters away. And again, no cut in the wire. We've just looped the wire around two big washers. And it continues on to our third and final earth stake. Uh, in the ground. For long fence lines it's imperative that any wire that's not electrified we run a wire from this earth stake up to the non-electrified wires. Um, if the ground gets dry and the animal touches both the live and the earth that will the earth wire will return the pulse a lot better than the dry soil. Um, so always run a wire uh, for long distances from your earth stakes to any non-electrified wires in the fence line. And you can incorporate and use those non-electrified wires as earth return wires. So in addition to our earth wire, we've come up under the ground with our live wire. Again, it's bent down and we've made a connection to our hot insulated live wire. Um, we're using wire joint clamps. Clamps provide a good electrical connection um, uh, and, and, <clears throat> and avoid any uh, breakdowns um, uh, that the fence can cause. So what we've done here, we've paralleled the live wires. We've got three live wires in this fence line using offsets and the three hot wires are all paralleled and joined up. This uh, makes, creates a larger wire mass and has less resistance against the flow of the pulse in the fence line. So we parallel our live wires at both ends of the run to reduce the resistance in the fence. Use live wire uh, joint clamps wherever um, you do that to ensure a good electrical connection. Um, we're using insulated cable so there's no chance of a short um, to the earth from our live wires.